Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. On my wrist is one of the watches that I'd like to showcase and highlight today. Uh, this is a Hamilton limited edition, and it's one of two watches that uh, Hamilton did release in conjunction with Hodinkee. So this is the Hamilton slash Hodinkee box set limited edition in which there will be one khaki field mechanical 38 with a special dial, an individually numbered case back, and then the other watch is the Khaki Pilot Pioneer Mechanical Chronograph, of which I have on wrist and uh, just for full transparency. I love this chronograph. Uh, this one I am more partial to over the Khaki Field Mechanical 38, although that watch is no slouch. It's thin and it's trim and it's comfortable and it's the right size for those of you that like a uh, smaller or more traditionally wearing sports piece. So I think both of them are very solid tool watches. One is a field watch, one is an aviation piece, and they have similar design language. And I like this limited edition when it comes to the dial design that Hamilton worked with Hodinkee on. So there will be an orange accent color, a railroad track, and it ends up just looking cohesive and simple, and it doesn't look out of place when you consider Hamilton's history and their current product catalog. Now this will be exclusive to the Hodinkee Shop website. So uh, yes, you can find individual watches, uh, but if you want the box set, you want the first 200 of the production run, you have to go through the Hodinkee website. And let me show you what comes with the watches because I think the extras are pretty significant in this instance. So there will be a custom-made waterproof Pelican case that is nice and hefty and solid. And yes, it is waterproof, so let's say you went on a kayaking adventure or something and you had this strap to your, uh, you know, your kayak, if you turned over or whatnot, your watches would be completely safe. Uh, there will also be a co-branded soft valet mat, so if you're sitting in the office, you can put your valet mat on your desk and place your Hamilton watches on top. And just keep them safe from uh, desk scratches and whatnot <laughs> uh, for the next time you actually take them out and use them as a sports piece is intended to be used. Within this Pelican case, there will also be additional nylon straps done in the black in the army green color configurations. And lastly, there will be a set of three small field note memo books for you to make notes on as you go on adventures and you want to retain some... Uh, I don't know, things that you notice as you're out hiking or camping or doing whatever you do with those sport watches on. Now, let me talk about both watches. I'll talk about the strengths and then I'll talk about the very frustrating weakness that I think many Hamilton watches share. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump into it here. Let's start with the strengths. So I mentioned I'm partial to the chronograph and I love this asymmetrical beefy case with the flush bezel the box sapphire crystal. I love how this is mostly brushed and it just has a good style to it. It's uncommon to see a chronograph with an asymmetrical case. I think the last one that was prominent in my mind uh, would be the recently discontinued Rolex Daytona that had a smaller case in uh, the, the function pusher side of the case. This is opposite. This has the more beefy side with your function pushers and with your crown at the three o'clock position. I also like the dial layout with the bright orange accenting, the nice long hand members. That's one nice thing about Hamilton is they don't skimp on the length or the quality of the handsets. I like the railroad index track that's nice and old school, and I think it works perfectly with the old school logo of which I am a fan. I think the logo looks more I don't know, maybe it's it's totally subjective, but it just looks better in my opinion. And that's probably due to my personal bias because Hamilton was once an American brand that was founded in the late 1800s and headquartered in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, an area of the country that is absolutely beautiful that I have visited multiple times. I've actually stayed in the old Hamilton factory, which is still standing and has been converted from a production facility to luxury condominiums. So just my history with uh, visiting the birthplace of the brand and seeing some amazing museum pieces that are housed at the National Watch and Clock Museum, which is just about 15 minutes up the road. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So I like the old logo. I like the color scheme. I like the detail work here. I like the original design. 
I think these watches are very versatile. They have their own identity and they're fun to wear. Again, I am wearing the chronograph here and I've placed it on a German made Milanese mesh from a brand called Stabe. And I really like this combo. So anytime I come across a watch that has an okay strap, but I'm not in love with it, I usually go to the polished Milanese mesh. And for whatever reason, I, I really like how these dress up a few of the different watches that I've reviewed. Now the negative elements or <laughs> the frustrating elements when it comes to Hamilton, I think some of you will see this coming a mile away, but it's the fact that the sapphire crystals, either they have a very weak application of ARC on the underside only, or they have no ARC on either side of the sapphire crystal, which generally isn't a big deal. Can you still read the watch? Yes. Is it still highly scratch resistant and whatnot? Yes, but it comes down to the satisfaction. Not having great clarity makes a difference to me and seeing ridiculous reflections on the crystals is disappointing, especially when I'm trying to film and photograph watches for YouTube. Uh, it's a running theme with Hamilton that I've noticed. They have very poor or non-existent ARC, and that's uh, one thing that I think holds this awesome, affordable brand back. Now, that being said, to be fair, it is uh, considered one of the entry brands in the Swatch Group hierarchy. So I, I don't think that they want to make too great of a watch that's so well-rounded that it takes sales away from some of the higher priced tiered brands within that group. So it could be a strategy on the part of the Swatch group. I just know I'm not a fan myself. And will that be a deal breaker? I think again, it comes down to a case by case basis with some watches. I say, yeah, it's not worth it with others. I think sometimes the strengths outweigh the drawbacks. And so I end up purchasing that watch or enjoying that Hamilton for a specific amount of time. Now, let me end with one great strength when it comes to these two watches, and that will be the movements within. So we have uh, mechanical hand wind movements that are based off various ETA calibers. The H50 found in the Khaki Field Mechanical 38 is based off of the 2801 base ETA, and this will have 80 hours of power reserve, which is an excellent number. That's over three days of power reserve. And I find it very pleasant to wind the crown. Look at that thin case with the slender lugs and also that blasted finish when it comes to the stainless steel. So this is in a very, that's a very attractive watch, a great size with a great, uh, very simple, thin caliber. Now the movement within this chronograph, I like even more. This is based off of the Valjoux 7753 chronograph. This is also a hand wind chronograph. So there will be no rotor and there will be no Valju rotor wobble, which I think is a good thing. Now this will have a silicon hairspring, 60 hours of power reserve. And unlike the H50, uh, this one beats at four Hertz and carries 27 joules. So nice actuation, again, a great style, very hefty, especially after I placed it here on this stave mesh. And I just think the versatility, the style, the history, the old font, the faint concentric circle texturing in the bi-compact sub registers paired with the bright orange long hand design. Uh, I just think it's a winning recipe. So it's easy for me to see why Hamilton is held in high regard, but also at the same time, I am a little bit frustrated with their lack of ARC on their watches. And one other thing that I'll mention the loom is not fantastic. Hamilton is not known for doing great loom. And in this case, it is done in old radium superluminova or Fotina as some watch collectors refer to it. So it's, I don't know, it's a case by case basis for me again, because I think on some watches, it just looks out of place. It looks half baked. I don't think it looks good, but on other watches, I don't mind it so much. And in the instance of these two, Hamilton slash Hodinkee box set limited edition watches, I actually think it works pretty well. And here's the reasoning. We have orange for your accent color, nice and bright and eye-catching. And then that works well with the creamy warm tone of the old radium superluminova. And then you have white when it comes to the railroad track and the old school logo. So there's a good balance. There's a good spectrum of orange 
too white. So it ends up looking cohesive in my opinion. And I think if it were white, uh, if the loom was white in natural light, it might look a touch clinical, but again, it could come down to personal preference. On the whole, I really like these watches. I like to shout out my good friend Stan, who is uh, letting me borrow these, and we might have to work out a swap or something when it comes to this chronograph because uh, it's a dang cool watch and I think it carries some really solid value. That being said, I'll place all relevant links in the description of the video. Please reach out with any questions you may have. I'll do my best to answer those in the comment section. Thank you again for watching and I uh, hope you have a great day. See you next time.